devil tells me so. The Lord saved me. I'm as happy as can be. My cup is full and running over. Zacchaeus was a wee little man. A wee little man was he. He climbed up in a sycamore tree for the Lord he wanted to see. And as the Savior passed that way, he looked up in the tree. And he said, Zacchaeus, you come down, for I'm going to your house today, for I'm going to your house today.
praise than when we first begun. I wanted to sing that this morning. <coughs> my, my sinus has been bothering me. I thought, well, maybe I can. But if I remember correctly, and my memory is not great, but I really think that Kate was the first person that ever asked me to sing that at church. And so I wanted to sing that this morning for her. And just to let everybody know, I love everybody here. And everybody here has made such an impact on my life. And I'm thankful to God for everybody that I've met and loved at this church. morning turn your bible to matthew chapter 27 matthew chapter 27 verse 32 matthew 27 verse 32 now we're going to look at this morning the procession to calvary what took place and by the grace of god take this scripture and apply it to ourselves you know the bible was written by many different men over a long period of time, but they were all inspired by the Spirit of God. And it's meant for us to <coughs> read, to learn from, but it's applicable. When you read the Bible, understand that. Many people read the Bible, you know, and stand back, well, it's taught. No, the Bible speaks to you personally. And every time you read the Bible, you need to read it thinking, you know, how does this apply to me? Let God's Spirit take that word and apply it to your life and use it in your life. In verse 32, and as they came out, they found a man of serene, Simon by name, him they compelled to bear his cross. In other words, they didn't ask him to. They said, you pick up that cross and you carry it. There wasn't no asking politely, hey, do you mind doing this for him or do you mind doing this for us? Things? You pick that up and carry it. Now, who was Simon? We don't know much, really, anything about him except where he was from. We do know that he had two boys that Mark refers to as Rufus and Alexander and maybe possibly, you know, was someone more than likely that they knew in the church in Mark's gospel and his letter that he wrote. But anyway, uh, don't know much about him. Not at all. And been much speculation and thought about, well, why did they tell him to pick up that cross and carry it? The ones who was condemned, the ones that were going to be crucified were the ones to bear the cross. Now, and I can, you know, see the viewpoints about why they did so. Uh, maybe Christ was so weak from the physical beatings. Uh, maybe he wasn't going fast enough to suit them. I don't know. But once again, you need to understand that's just speculation because the Scriptures does not say why they told him to pick that cross up and carry it. Now, many commentaries and many people who study this they will, you know, say, well, they asked him to do it because he was unable to. We don't know that. Not from the scriptures. Now, they say, well, tradition. Well, I understand that too. And some tradition is true, but some tradition isn't true. So we don't really know. We don't really know why they told Simon, pick that cross up and carry So remember that. You can have your own thoughts and your own ideas, and that's fine. There's nothing wrong with that. But don't. Don't say, well, I know for sure. I don't know why they had him carry that cross. No, you don't. Because the scriptures doesn't tell you why they did. But we just know that they told him, said, look, you pick that cross up and you carry it. Now, in verse 33, and when they were coming to the place of Golgotha, that is to say, a place of a skull, they gave him vinegar to drink, mingled with gall, and when he had tasted the of, he would not drink. Painkiller. Their form of painkiller. Of course, we have so many different ones today. But they didn't have that much back then. But Christ knew what it was and refused it. Refused it. What he was going to go through. 
He didn't want to have his, you know, uh, senses or, uh, you know, dull because of something in it. He knew what he was facing. And let me tell you something. He was trusting God's grace to enable him to endure what he was going to go through. And they crucified him and parted his garments, casting lots. That it might be filled what was spoken of with the prophet. They parted my garments among them, and upon my vesture did they cast lots. Of course, that's recorded in the psalm. And sitting down, they watched him there. <coughs> and set over his head, this ac his accusation written, this is Jesus, the King of the Jews. Now, crucifixion. If you've read about it, studied about it, a very cruel way to die, wasn't it? Very cruel way to die. Roman citizens were exempt from having to undergo this. From what I've read and what I've studied as well. But anyway, an instrument of death, wasn't it? That's what the cross was. <clears throat> we know that as well as being an instrument of death, it was an instrument of sacrifice, wasn't it? Because it was there that Jesus sacrificed himself and died for our sins on that cross. Did he not? Yes, he did, didn't he? He who knew no sin became <laughs> our sin and paid our sin debt on that cross. Now, you and I, our death would have been meaningless if we had been crucified for our sins because he wouldn't have paid sin's death. Only his death could accomplish that. What is the cross? What's the significance of the cross for you and I? I thought about this and I prayed about this. You know, Mark tells us in his gospel that Christ stated if anybody wants to come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. Now, you remember the Garden of Gethsemane? We talked about this a few weeks ago when Christ was praying about what he knew was going to happen. And he prayed the prayer, if there's any way possible, any other way besides this, Lord, let this cup pass from me. And he was speaking of his becoming sin on the cross. But nevertheless, not my will, but thine be done. Jesus who left the portals of glory. What did Jesus, you know, personally get out of leaving glory and coming down here to the earth and dying for our sins? Think about that. He was already creator. He was already <laughs> Lord of Lord. He was already King of Kings, wasn't he? What did he get out of it? It's what we got out of it, isn't it? His willingness to deny himself and sacrifice himself on the cross for our sins. That was the cross that only he could bear. No one else could do it. No one. No one. That was his cross. I want to talk this morning about the cross that Jesus spoke of in the Gospel of Mark. Our cross. He says, let him take up his cross and follow me. Now, We know the cross was an instrument of death. We know as Christians it was where Christ sacrificed himself. And so the, for the Christian, for the Christian, it's an instrument of what symbolizes to us what sacrifice, doesn't it? Now, many people think that, you know, my cross is what I'm dealing with personally maybe some kind of physical ailment, some kind of this going on, some kind of that going on that's my cross to bear I don't agree with that you may but I don't I, I, I don't think that's what he's talking about when he says 
bearing your cross. You know, well, I'm just going through so much. It's just the cross I have to bear and in my life. Look, we know, or we should know, adversity, physical calamity, everybody deals with that. Do they not? They do. Now, I know sometimes some more than others. And, you know, humanly speaking, we're just who we are by nature. We always feel like we're having it tougher than anybody else. And I don't know what to say about that. That's just what it is. We just have to understand that and to realize that. Everybody thinks they have more problems, more difficulties than anybody else. And there's nothing really you can do that can change that mentality because that's just the way that our sinful, carnal nature thinks. We're selfish and we're self-centered. We can't help it. That's just the way that we are. And we see things like that. We think we have it harder than anybody else. And our cross is much harder to bear than other people. I don't think when he's speaking of the cross, I don't think he's talking about that. I really don't. Now, you might. If we disagree, we still love one another, right? I don't think that's what he's talking about, what you're going through personally and the physical problems or the mental problems or financial problems or whatever they may be. I don't think that's what he's talking about. I really don't. I don't think so. I think what he's talking about here is, remember, the cross for the Christian is about what? Sacrifice. Denying oneself. Giving up for other people. That's what I think he's talking about. That's the cross of the thing he's talking about. It's not about you. It's not about you. We make everything about ourselves, don't we? I just That's once again, that's who we are. We want to make it about ourselves. It's not about that. That's not what he's talking about. When he's talking about that cross, he says, for his followers to pick up, he first said before that, denial, didn't he? Let him deny himself. In other words, you don't think about yourself and what it's going to cost you and what you're going to have to go through. It's about what? Sacrificing not for oneself, but sacrificing for other people. Now think about Jesus. What was the cross to him? Hmm? Was it was it a means of, uh, of uh, you know, promoting himself? Uh, you know, was it, he was already the Lord of Lords, King of Kings, wasn't he? What was the cross to Jesus? It was what? Not about himself. It was about you, wasn't it? And what he could do for you, and what he did do for you. His willingness to do what come and to die on that cross that only he could do and pay your sin debt so that you could, if you're willing to accept that and trust in that, be forgiven of your sins and be given eternal life. That's what it was about, wasn't it? Well, he says in the Gospel of Mark, deny yourself and take up your cross and follow Jesus. Now, what is he talking about here? What's he saying here? What does he mean by we need to take up our cross? As I said before, many people just think it's the personal things that you have to endure and you have to go through personally speaking. I don't believe that it is. I don't think that's what he's talking about. Everybody does that, don't they? I mean, think about it. You know, everybody does that. Does that require any sacrifice? When you think about it, not really, does it? Because you're going to have to go through that anyway, aren't you? I mean, that's part of life. Part of life. I had the honor and privilege this week of officiating Kate James' funeral. And, you know, everybody wants to go to heaven, but nobody wants to die, do they? But as I made that point, God has given me, in, in, inspired me in, in, to make that point. You don't go to heaven unless you die. 
unless you're alive and remain when Jesus returns, then you'll be changed. You can't go to heaven the way you are right now. This body must do what? Go through the aging process or but go back to the dusty earth from which it came. So everybody endures that. Everybody goes through that, do they not? That's part of living. That's part of life. It's unavoidable, isn't it? Read the, big, read the book of Ecclesiastes. It describes for you the aging process and what it is. And that's just what it is. That's what it is. That's not cross to bear. That's just what it is. That's a curse of sin. The wage of sin is death. That's not a cross you're bearing. That's what happens to people. It's not about, that's not sacrificing. That's just what's going to happen to you, isn't it? Sure it is. The cross is about sacrificing for other people, isn't it? I think that that's what he's talking about. Denying yourself, quit being in, you know, so just, you know, obsessed with yourself and who you are and what you're going through and all this and that. And think about other people. <coughs> think about other people. In the Garden of Gethsemane, when Christ was praying, he knew what lay ahead, he knew what was coming, he knew how he would be treated physically, he knew how badly he'd be beaten. He knew how bad he'd be mocked. But what he dreaded most was becoming our sin. He knew that was coming, didn't he? He knew it was coming. But that was the cross that only he could bear. And he willingly embraced it as God's will and God's plan for his life. And without that, my friend, there is no salvation. There is no hope. There's nothing to look forward to, is there? <laughs> So you see, it was about sacrifice. It's about putting other people first. That's the cross I think that he's speaking of. Don't make it about yourself. It's about what you can do for other people. That's the cross that he's talking about. That many aren't willing to pick up. That many aren't willing to do. Because they're so focused on themselves and what they want and what they're going through. They don't think about other people. But he's talking about sacrificing for others. Now, I'm not talking about, and he's not talking about dying. He's not talking about that. Christ died and paid sins today. You can't do that. The cross, I believe that he would have you to bear and have us to bear is not one that leads to the death that Christ experienced at Calvary, which only he could do. I think what he's talking about is living for him. Living for him. Turn to Romans chapter 12, verse 1. Romans chapter 12 and verse 1. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a what? Living sacrifice. Holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. So, what is the cross? To the Christian that Christ is speaking of, take up your cross and follow me. What's he saying to you? What's he meaning by that? I believe that he's talking about, I want you to live for me. Live for me. Now, let me say this. <coughs> that constitutes a whole lot more than just attending church on a regular basis, reading your Bible on a regular basis, and praying to God on a regular basis. Because, let me say this, those are things that you do for yourself. And you need to do them for yourself. 
You need to attend church regularly. You need to read your Bible. You need to pray. Those things are important for your spiritual growth. Those are things you do for yourself. What he's talking about is what you do for others. Many people, I think, sometimes, and this is my opinion, you can disagree with me too, and I still love you and hope you still love me. Attending church, reading your Bible, and praying, technically when you look at it and think about it, that's not serving God. That's preparing you to serve God. That's part of worship. That's something that you need. But if you limit that to what you say, well, I'm serving the Lord, I think it encompasses so much more than that when you're talking about serving God, don't you? I think serving God is by what you do for other people. That's what I believe. Now, I may be wrong, but I believe that. That's my personal view and conviction when it talks about living sacrifice. Don't just limit it to the fact that, well, I attend church and, and I read my Bible and I pray and, you know, and I, and I, I, I give money to church. And, oh, it's much more than that. It's living for the Lord. Serving other people. Doing things for other people. Sacrificing for them just like Jesus did for you. That's the cross that, he, that he's talking about here. I, it, it, I don't think, what, what kind of burden is it when you're just doing, you know, he said, well, I go to church. My gosh. If you see that as a burden, you're, I'm not, you, you, need, you need prayer. I'm serious. If you see coming to church as a burden, you need to, you need prayer. Coming to church is a privilege. Coming to church is something you should want to do, not have to do. There's a big difference, isn't there? This ought to be something you say, man, I, you know, there's a difference in it. Well, I've got to go to church or I get to go to church. There's a difference in there. I think there is. I think there is. You know, this is a privilege. You know, if you view this as a sacrifice, <laughs> it's, it, you, it's, it, it's a sacrifice to come to church. What are you sacrificing to come to church, my friend? What are you giving up to come to church? My friend, this is a privilege. This is an honor. We shouldn't view it as a burden. My goodness. The cross is a burden, isn't it? When you think about it, it is, isn't it? And when you're denying oneself and you're taking up your cross and you're committing to serving others and doing things for others and making yourself available unto God, that, my friend, is what I think he's talking about when he's saying, take up your cross and follow me. I really believe that. I believe that. It begins with your life and what you do with it, doesn't it? What do you do? With what 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 do you do with your? How do you see your life? What are you doing with your life? That that as I said is that would even indicate that you're, you know, bearing some kind of a cross. You're, you know, sacrificing something in your life for other people. For other people. That's what I think he's talking about. Is denying yourself, putting other people first. First and foremost, God comes first, doesn't it? You put God first, then you put the needs of others next, and then yours, God will take care of. See, that's the problem. I think it stems from a lack of a faith on our part when Christ is promising, look, you know, God knows what you need. Seek you first the kingdom of God, his righteousness, and all these other things will be added unto you. And when you do that and you keep your promise, you'll be taken care of. God will take care of you. Won't it? I believe that he will. So the cross, <coughs> a living sacrifice. You know, we talk in terms of being a Christian, which, you know, technically when you think about it is you're trying to imitate Christ. You're trying to be Christ-like. Are you not? Well, we can try. 
And in some ways, we resemble it. But it's impossible for a human being, a sinful human being, to be Christ-like. I think it is. Have you ever met anybody just like Jesus? I've never met anybody like Jesus. I mean, we try. I try. I, I press toward the mark of high calling of God and Christ. But I'm not Jesus. I'm not Jesus. I wish I was like, and I will be like him one day, but I'm not right now. I'm not even close. Not even close. To being like my Lord and Savior. That's why I need him to come and die for my sins on Calvary's cross. Living sacrifice. Being a living sacrifice. Living for God and for others. Paul refers to it as being a reasonable service. Think about your life. What's your life about? Now think about it. I know there's obligations. This life you must fulfill. Aren't they? You got to work. And I'll tell you what, work is honorable. When God created Adam and Eve, what did he do? Put them in the garden of Eden. And he gave him something to do, didn't he? <coughs> Take care of this place. Did y'all not mean, really? Does the Bible not speak in terms of working? You're not being idle. It does, doesn't it? You've got those kinds of obligations. You've got to, and, and here's the thing about it. You know, work, being able to work is a blessing from God too. I think that it is. You may not think it is, but I think that, that's a blessing from God to be able to do it. That God gives you the grace, the power, and the strength to go do that. And, you know, you've got that. You've got other things going on. There's a lot of things going on in your life. I understand that and I realize that. But what's your life about? Are you just consumed by what you want and what you desire? And what, or is it about how can I help other people? How can I serve the Lord? And I believe we serve the Lord by serving other people and helping other people. What can I do with my life? Let me take up the cross God has for me <coughs> and deny myself and sacrifice for others. <coughs> and here's the thing too. Nobody, nobody can tell you what your cross is. Because I don't know. You know, sometimes we want to look at other people and Maybe say, well, they need to be doing this and they need to be doing that. How do you know they need to be doing this and they need to be doing that? You don't have no idea. That's just your own personal opinion. That's between them and the Lord, isn't it? What you need to focus on is what does God want me to do? I, you know, that's what I mean. What would God have me to do with my life that constitutes taking a cross and following Him? And remember, that's talking about sacrificing. Sacrificing. You know, oftentimes in the scripture, many people say, I'm going to follow you, Jesus. Well, you need to understand something about following me, what's involved in it. I don't even have a home. Remember you tell one guy that? I don't have nowhere to live. You, you want to follow me? You know, maybe say, I want to follow Jesus. I want to follow him. Do you really? Do you really want to follow him and have and have and and and, and let him control your life? Really? Or do you want to say, well, I want to follow the Lord as long as it goes, go, goes according to what I have planned. Now, when we have a conflict, then, you know, that's where we have the parting of the ways because I'm going my way. Taking up your cross is saying, I think that's unconditionally surrendering. You don't put no conditions on it. Say, <coughs> so, Lord, I'm yours. What would you have me to do? 
What would you have me to do? What did Saul of Tarsus say when he met the Lord Jesus Christ on the road to Damascus? <coughs> Lord, what would you have me to do? What do you want me to do? Of course, we know how Paul spent his life. He did what only he could do because that was the, the cross, the sacrifices he made for other people. Well, I think there's an old song, there is a cross for everyone, and there's a cross for me. I think that's part of it. I mean, it's, it's, I've heard that song before at one time, and there is. There is. And, and don't make it about yourself. The cross is about others. For Jesus, the cross wasn't about him. It was about what he could do for you and for me. So, take up your cross, deny yourself, and take up your cross and follow the Lord. That's what the cross is. Isn't it? It's about sacrifice. It's about denial. If you're here this morning, you don't know Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. Jesus did for you what no one could do, what you could not do for yourself. Because he was willing to do what? Deny himself? <coughs> Lay his life down on the cross and pay your sin debt that you could have forgiveness of your sins. And you couldn't. There's no forgiveness apart from that. He's the only ticket to heaven, my friend. There is no more. Only through Jesus. If you're here today and you don't know him, God loves you. God wants to save you. God proved that love. What he did, what he did, didn't he? By sending him on Calvary's cross. Put your faith and trust in Jesus. Accept him as your personal savior. And as Christians, as Christians, do we desire and want that cross God has for us to bear? Do we or don't we? Do we want to embrace a life of denial and a life of sacrifice? Now let me say this. That isn't easy to do. <coughs> and I'm going to tell you why that isn't easy to do. <clears throat> because you're selfish by nature. Everybody is. You don't have to teach a baby how to be selfish. They'll show you right quick in a hurry they're selfish. <laughs> They don't learn that. They're born that way. You know, sometimes we look at people and we say, well, what happened? How did they get like that? Well, they were born like that. How do you, what do you mean, how did they get like that? They were born like that. That's the way we're all born that way. Same way. And it's not easy. It's just not easy for us with a selfish nature, nature to deny and to sacrifice. Is it? It's not easy. It's hard sometimes. And on top of that, on top of that, most people don't attend church. They don't. They don't read God's word and study God's word when it talks about, you know, a life of denial, a life of sacrifice. It's ingrained in them by the world that we live in. That's the way to go. You look out for number one. You take care of yourself. You do what's best for you. How many times do you hear those expressions? All the time, don't you? Well, that just compounds the problem, doesn't it? When you've got people with a mentality, I'm looking out for myself, then what, how do you think? What do you think is going to happen? What, how do you think people think? This is what, you know, it's, I'm, in, I'm in it for me. I'm in it for me. So you see, it's not easy. It's not easy, is it? But I'm going to tell you this. The rewards in heaven. <coughs> it's not even worthy to compare what you might obtain here in this life by being selfish. And you will, materially speaking, you know, be, if you want to be selfish and self-centered, you can obtain some things in this life, materially speaking. Those things are only temporary, my friend. They don't, you're not taking them with you, are you? No. But a few 
realize, understand, and believe in in a life of sacrifice and denial is a life, a rewarding life. What awaits you in glory one day, but most importantly, most importantly, I, I, I really believe this. You may not believe this, but I believe this. The happiest people on the earth are people who deny and sacrifice. You may not believe that, but I believe that. I believe those are the happiest people you meet. Not the ones who live for themselves selfishly and have all the things that money can buy and all the things that the world can offer. Those people aren't happy. The happy people are the ones who deny <coughs> and who sacrifice. Think about this. Where would you be if you hadn't had people in your life who didn't deny themselves and sacrifice for you? What would you be today? It starts right back at home with mom and dad. You don't really appreciate how much they denied and sacrificed for you until afterward. You don't. Then you look back and you say, wow. What would I be today if not for them? What would I be today? And there could be, and there's many others in your life that have done. Where would you be today if people hadn't denied themselves and sacrificed for you? Think about it. Well, you can never repay that. You can't repay that. So what do you do? You do the same for other people. You deny and sacrifice for them. And it keeps passing on. That's what the Christian life's all about, isn't it? Giving. For God so loved the world that he what? Gave his only begotten son. It's about giving of oneself. It's about taking up that cross. It's about denying. It's about sacrificing. That's what I believe he's talking about here. As Christians. Give some thought to the Word of God today. Are you, are you living for God and others? Or are you living for yourself? <coughs> now, you know, we can convince ourselves because the way the, the ways of a man are right is on us. You know, you can justify yourself if you want to, if you just, you know, you can talk yourself into it, so to speak. But here's the thing about it. When you read God's Word, God's Word will show you on it. It will show you, it will reveal to you some things about yourself. Look at your life and ask yourself, is my life about denial? Is my life about sacrifice? Is my life about other people? What if Jesus had chosen not to bear that cross for you? You know, that cross you might be bearing might be so beneficial to somebody else. But <coughs> think about it. You know, maybe, maybe, just maybe, when they told Simon, you pick up that cross and you carry it, maybe that was revealing to us, you know. Now, that wasn't his cross. Well, I mean, he'd done that, he'd done that for for Jesus, didn't he? Think about that. What your denial and sacrifice, what it might mean to somebody else. Think about it. I'm talking about not temporary, but I'm talking about eternally, what it might mean for them. Just a little bit of denial, a little bit of sacrifice on your part, what it could mean to someone else. <laughs> Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you today, God, for this message. I thank you, God, Lord, for the grace and the strength and the power you've given me to preach this message. God, I pray today if anyone hears this message and doesn't know Jesus Christ as their personal Savior, the Lord will return to him in faith today and be saved. And help us as Christians, God to realize and to understand God. We are to live for you. 
God, you paid our sin debt on Calvary's cross. You did what we could not do. God, help us as Christians to appreciate what denial and sacrifice is all about. And living for you and living for others. Lord, I pray today, if anyone here today, you're dealing with them, God, about living for you, that, Lord, they would make that commitment and say, Lord, I'm willing to follow you. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back, no turning back. In his name we pray. Amen.